what are the symptoms of spinal cord tumors in specific what are the symptoms of intramedullary spinal cord tumors intramedullary spinal cord tumors are those tumors which arise from the center of the spinal cord I'm Dr. Kalyan. I'm a neurosurgeon and spine surgeon from Avair Glenagales Global Hospital, Hyderabad. So what are the symptoms of intramedullary spinal cord tumors? I'm specifically telling about the intramedullary spinal cord tumors. The intramedullary spinal cord tumors are those tumors which arise from the center of the spinal cord. The most common intramedullary spinal cord tumors are the ependymoma and the astrocytoma. So the clinical features of intramedullary ependymomas are variable. They are not the same in every patient. The classical presentation is a central cord syndrome, which I will be explaining in my later slides. But in every patient, this classical syndrome is not seen. The early symptoms are usually non-specific and they progress very slowly. These non-specific symptoms, they last for three to four years before a rapid decline. So you have to remember, there is at least three to four years period of non-specific symptoms. That is, it's very difficult to suspect a spinal cord tumor. In these three years, before the symptoms become obvious, the tumor increases in size. So the classical presentation is central cord syndrome. Now what is central cord syndrome? Suppose a tumor is located here. There is weakness and there is sensory loss below the level of lesion. Suppose the tumor is situated here. So at this level and below, the patient will have weakness that is motor uh, symptoms and also sensory symptoms. So this central cord syndrome is classical, but not seen in every patient. In this central cord syndrome, the patient has more symptoms in the upper limbs compared to symptoms in the lower limb. That is, if the tumor is in the cervical cord, that is in the neck region, the upper limb, that is hands are more severely involved than the lower limbs. And when a, when a limb is involved, the distal muscles are more involved than the proximal muscles. That is, fingers are more involved than the proximal muscles. That is the shoulders. So let me explain in, in concise way the central cord syndrome. So suppose the patient has a tumor in this part. Then at the level of the tumor, the patient will have loss of the motor function. That is, he will have paralysis or weakness. Below the level of the tumor, he will have partial paralysis and he will have variable degree of partial sensory loss. And whenever it is involved, the hands are involved more than the legs. The distal muscles, the muscles in the periphery, far off in the hands are more involved. That is, the muscles of the fingers, muscles of the palm are more involved in a, a muscles of the shoulder. Sensory symptoms, they are the earliest to present in up to 70% of the patients. Dysesthesia, that is abnormal sensations are very common. Painful aching sensations can be seen at the tumor site. The distribution and progression of symptoms are depend on tumor location. As I've told you, the upper extremity symptoms predominant with cervical tumors. Whereas thoracic cord tumors produce disturbances in the lower limb because the thoracic cord is below the neck. So the hands, neck and head are not affected. Only the low abdomen, that is your stomach and the legs are involved. Numbness is a common complaint and it typically begins distally and the legs and progresses proximally. That is this is the direction which the numbness progresses. Initially, the patient will have numbness in the legs and it slowly goes up. Whereas weakness is more common in the upper limbs, hands, and then it's less common in the lower limbs. So can you see the difference? The sensory loss is more in the legs 
whereas the weakness is more in the hands. If the tumor is in the lumbar region, that is in the lower back, you will have back pain and leg pain. You will have urogenital and anorectal dysfunction. That is a problem like constipation. You will have problem like uh, incontinence. That is, you will pass your stools without your knowledge. Similarly, you will have problem with urination. You may pass urine without your knowledge. Weakness is usually late and it's usually asymmetric. And when it when the progression, when you notice weakness, it means there is significant thinning of the spinal cord. Diagnosis is usually made with MRI imaging. MRI with, gadolo, with gadolinium contrast is the imaging modality of choice. Ependymomas are homogeneously enhancing. Ependymomas are assessed as ringomyelial cyst. And ependymomas are well demarcated. So let me conclude. Intramedular ependymomas are variable clinical presentations. Sensory symptoms are the most common early symptom. Weakness usually indicates if the patient comes with weakness, it means there is thinning of the surrounding spinal cord. That is, the tumor is already large in size. It has been growing since a long time. Diagnosis is usually made with MRI with gadolinium contrast, but the definite diagnosis is made with biopsy during surgery. Before you follow any advice, read the medical disclaimer. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you still have some is any doubts, if you have some reports, you can, if, if you want some opinion of mine, you can WhatsApp on the number which is being scrolled below. If your if your friends are related to their colleagues are suffering from spinal cord tumor and they require a second opinion, you can WhatsApp on the WhatsApp number below. I'll be happy to opine without any consultation charges. And do subscribe to my channel for further videos. Thank you.